Looking for a job in tech is an extremely stressful process, especially in today's time. In this video, I'm going to share a few tips and tricks that have worked for me personally while I was looking for a job in hopes to help you guys out. Now, before I begin, I just want to say that I'm in no way comparing my situation with your situation in the current scenario. I know times are tougher right now than it was when I was graduating three, four years back. But the entire purpose of this video is to help you create more opportunities for yourself in tech. So let's jump right into tip number one, which is to create tech content. Now here, I'm not asking you to become a content creator. I want to share two particular stories here. When I was in my final year in university, I think I've already talked about it. I actually interviewed for Google Tokyo. Now I ended up clearing the telephone round. I came to Bangalore to give the onsite, but I unfortunately failed it. But I decided to write an entire blog post about it on Medium. Now the interesting part here is that blog post gained quite a few views and it reached someone who used to work as a senior software engineer in a startup based in Tokyo. So that person actually reached out to me via email. I'll insert a screenshot here if I'm able to find it, asking me if I was still looking for a job and I was still interested in working in Tokyo. And he was kind enough to give me a referral that eventually ended up into an interview. I did not end up clearing that interview. That's a different story. But at least I ended up getting an interview from something so simple such as a blog post. Now the second story is when I was applying for a technical curriculum writer. I was still creating some content on Instagram. They were mostly static text based or illustration based posts. So I was using them as part of my resume or as part of my cover letter. And luckily, eventually that content also ended up getting me an interview, which ultimately got converted into a full time offer, which happened to be my first remote job. So what I'm trying to say here is create the content about the stuff you're actually interested in and make sure you're regularly posting content in the form of blog posts. It doesn't have to be YouTube videos or Instagram. I personally don't think having a YouTube presence or an Instagram presence is as important, but I would definitely say that medium blog posts or just blog posts in general, maybe Twitter also are generally helpful in building a portfolio for yourself and you never know what blog post or what piece of content reaches the right person. In fact, I think last year I heard about the story where this guy wanted to intern at Cred and he created an entire video as part of his application and posted it on LinkedIn as far as I remember or he posted it on Twitter and ended up catching the attention of the right people and I think he actually got that internship. From this story what I've learned is that what worked for me three, four years back still works for people. I still think learning in public actually works. Build cool stuff share it online and you never know what reaches the right person. You never know what actually results in an opportunity of a lifetime. Tip number two is to start small, start with small internships or even small freelance work. Not everything has to be the high paying or the dream job. Here again, I want to share two stories. I've already talked about it extensively that I've done multiple internships, small internships. They do not take much of your time, but I get to network and work with some really nice people. So first story here is I was working with two software engineers one of them was a software engineer at Grofers and one was a software engineer at Microsoft. I was working as a React intern and I was helping them translate the design files to React code. And one of them, the Microsoft engineer, ended up giving me a referral. However, that referral never converted into an interview. But for me, who does not know anyone who does not have any friend working at Microsoft who, or did not have any family member working at Microsoft, even connecting with people like them was a huge learning experience for me. Now, the second story in this section is, again, I was doing one another remote internship. So that company was actually a UK based company, but they were hiring interns from India. So I worked there and that guy was actually hiring people as interns and then offering them full-time offers as well and as far as I remember he said that he would be willing to offer up to one lakh as well which is a good enough starting salary for someone who's like freshly graduated. I did not pursue that particular opportunity because at the time my mind was full of fang dreams so I was preparing for my DSA interviews so I ended up leaving that internship to prepare for my interviews. So the key takeaway from these two stories is be willing to work at a lower price point when you're just starting out. You never know 
who you are going to get connected to sometimes the internships themselves might convert into a full time opportunity and the other time the internships might just get you a referral now i still think this tip is still applicable in today's world because networking will always remain even if it's paying less but you're getting your foot into the door it's worth it But yeah, on a side note, don't get scammed on these internship platforms as well. Building on tip number two is tip number three, which is networking. Go to events, go to workshops, go to conferences around where you live. or if possible try to get scholarships i know at my time there were a lot of different conferences and they would usually have some sort of scholarship i never ended up getting a scholarship of my own but i did once go to a wikimedia event here in bangalore i was living in delhi i came to bangalore like all expenses paid event in bangalore and there i connected with so many different contributors who were all contributing to the wikimedia foundation as open source contributors i'm still connected with quite a few of them today and they're doing great in their own lives so i'm pretty sure or if I ever need it they'll be happy to help me out as well so having people in your network that could potentially refer you is an extreme plus now how to build this network as a college student so this is where you connect with people in your university societies I was never active in a lot of them back in my university days but I was only a part of one of the technical societies which was free so I decided to join it and uh, during my final year I think I got an off campus referral via one of the seniors in that society i'm not exactly sure if the referral came from him exactly or not but i got a referral i gave the screening test and then i gave the interview which eventually led to a full time offer now if you don't have any societies or if you don't have any local meetups around your area then tip number 4 is about cold reach outs so this tip might be overused especially in today's time but this is how i used to do it my own time i am pretty sure a lot of people still do cold reach out cold reach outs have a slightly lower chance of being noticed but as someone who is desperately looking for a job i know i've been there i would knock on every door possible just to get a referral just to get an interview so here's a little bit about the art of cold reach outs so number one when you're reaching out to someone either via linkedin message or via email always keep it short and simple to the point if you're reaching out for a particular role for a particular position briefly list all of the relevant projects or the relevant work experience that you have in that keep the message short to the point and attach your resume i think in most of these cold reach outs your resume is the star of the show i personally don't think that it matters how long your message is if your resume is not good enough for that person they would probably not care about whatever you have written the resume is probably the first thing they'll see and if they like it then they'll probably pay more attention to what you've written so what i used to do was i was in a phase where i wanted to work in startup so i would create a list of the companies that i was interested in then i would go on linkedin search for recruiters and if it was a smaller startup i would also look for their co-founders or ctos and then send them linkedin messages or try to find out their emails for finding the emails these are the two tools that i used to use now here i want to be a little bit more uh, responsible as a content creator please do not spam these people only if you think you are actually a good fit send them a small simple email do not follow up 10 20 times follow up once if you don't hear back you don't hear back they are probably not interested and one more thing do not contact them on their personal emails always keep it professional always communicate on the professional channels maybe linkedin messages or work emails here's the screenshot of the email that i used to use i would sometimes customize it according to the company that i reached out to uh, using cold reach outs i did end up getting interviews back then i am pretty sure it's going to be much much harder in today's world but it's worth a try and if done right it might even lead to some Thing. now the last one is git and github so when i was in my third year of university i did an outreach internship in this project that was built using react and ruby on rails from what i've heard from other people as well is that there are quite less developers in this tech stack so since i was contributing to open source into this project i would frequently get emails at least around that time for some freelance or contract opportunities because these people were looking for ruby on rails developers and they somehow found my profile from the open source project so this was a form of inbound that i received now here i would say that i never followed up on any of these emails because i 
personally did not think that was a good fit for me. So yeah, contributing to open source, having active projects on Git and GitHub may result in some sort of inbound. It may or may not happen. There's no guarantee. And my philosophy in life is to try different things and see what works. So if you are interested in trying it out, go ahead. One more thing, be responsible about contributing to open source. There has been so many incidences where people are just spamming code, not useful code at all into these repositories and believing that something magical would happen and they would magically get a job or something. It's called open source code contributions because you're supposed to contribute actual code and contribute being the keyword here. You're supposed to contribute something that is actually useful. All right, so that's all I had for this video. Again, all of these tips only work when you know what you're doing. So that's all for this video. That's all I had to say. I hope these tips help you out in some way, some shape or form, or maybe inspires you to know that everyone faces rejections. Like I gave multiple interviews. I reached out to so many more people, never heard back from them. I luckily got a few interviews. I was not able to clear them. But I think that's the story of every software developer out there. You lose some, you win some, you're going to be rejected a lot more. And you just need that one win to propel you forward. With that being said, good luck in your job search journey. I'll see you guys in the next video.